Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, hey, my name is Mo. I'm a pharmacist, toxicologist, and safety assessor of personal care product. In this channel, we'll love to talk about skincare ingredients and their safety. If that sounds interesting to you, please don't forget to subscribe so you can get the most up-to-date information regarding the safety of your personal care product. So I believe by now, most of you saw the video of the toxicologist claiming that feminine hygiene products are toxic and loaded with chemicals that can harm you. This video is going to be a detailed response to that video. You can see it now. I'm a toxicologist and here's why you should care about the period products that you're using. Part one, let's talk about pads. The skin on the outside of the vagina or the vulva absorbs more chemicals compared to regular skin because of its unique structure. Toxic chemicals that can be found in your menstrual products, heavy metal, carcinogens like dioxin and 1,4-dioxin, volatile organic compounds such as benzene, pesticides like glyphosate, chlorine bleach, and endocrine disruptors such as phthalates and parabens. Even organic pads still release benzene. Check the ingredients list on pads and panty liners. Unscented organic cotton is a slightly better option compared to conventional, but it's not without its own risks. Plus, it's not sustainable and results in a lot of waste. Look for a more sustainable option like reusable organic cotton pad or look for non-PFAS treated period underwear. Like and follow for part two, all about tampons. I will start by saying essential products like feminine hygiene products should be universally available and affordable, not universally feared as something that will cause you harm. To be honest, this video is going to be long, but will equip you with the necessary information and knowledge so you won't fall or your loved one for fear-based marketing. And as always, of course, all the studies mentioned are below. First, to understand how safe feminine hygiene products are, we need to understand how they are regulated. Are they cosmetics? Are they drugs or something else? Let's start with the US, the United States. I believe the US label and hold feminine hygiene product as the highest category compared to other countries or markets. In the US, according to the FDA, feminine hygiene products like pads and tampons are classified as medical devices. There are three classes of medical devices in the US according to the Center for Devices and Radiological Health, CDRH. There are class one, class two, and class three. So, a little breakdown to understand what does all this mean. Unscented menstrual pads are categorized as class 1, scented or scented deodorized menstrual pads are classified as class 1 or class 2. Scented or scented deodorized menstrual tampon, unscented menstrual tampon, and menstrual cups are categorized as class 2. So, Mo, what does this all mean? It means that the FDA has a direct control over those products. In simpler word, meaning that everything that goes into those products from components, including additives in menstrual tampons, applicators, or pads, should be provided to the FDA. Also, there is a marketing notification period, which means if I wanted to sell a feminine hygiene product in the US market, I will have to notify the FDA through the Office of Device Evaluation and then the Division of Reproductive, Abdominal and Urological Devices, lastly by the Obstetrics and Gynecology branch. Now let's jump to the EU. In the EU, it's a different story because feminine hygiene products in the EU have no clear definition. So it falls under the General Product Safety Directive of 2009 number 95. Although there is an absence of definition, those products are also regulated by the European Commission, the European Chemical Agency and their initiative REACH, Plus, those products are regulated by the regulation regarding the eco-labels number 66 of 2010 and also the eco-labels for absorbent hygiene product by the commission decision number 763 of 2014. Lastly, I'll jump to Korea. They are regulated as a quasi-drug under the Pharmaceutical Affairs Acts of the Ministry of Food and Drug Safety 2018. Why am I mentioning Korea? Because they had this public fear for pads a while ago and the Ministry of Food and Drug Safety did a tons of studies regarding the existence of toxic chemical in feminine pads and to be honest they found they pose zero risk for human with normal usage now let's jump back to the video of the toxicologist claiming that pads contain those toxic ingredients in the video she showed two studies 
one that says that the skin in the grown area absorb more chemicals compared to other skin on the body which is correct and very established fact the second study is an evaluation study regarding a chemical analysis of some compounds in feminine hygiene products let's look at the second study in more details it is titled as Violetal Organic Compounds in Feminine Hygiene Product Sold in the U.S. Market, a Survey of Products and Health Risk. That is the title. The first thing you see when you open the link of the study is that in the highlight, they clearly stating, and I quote, all feminine hygiene product in this study contains some toxic volatile organic compounds, but generally at low concentration. The exposure assessment of this study uses worst case scenario, which means the study assumed that 100% of the chemical found in the pads will be absorbed through your skin into your bloodstream, which is a not real life scenario. Although the skin in the groin area is more permeable, let's say, compared to other skin on the body, but again, this will not never happen in real life. The 100% absorption rate was referenced from a 2019 study done on Korean sanitary pads and this 2019 study found zero risk for those chemical in pads to cause human any harm. You have to remember this fact that those chemicals are not added intentionally to the feminine hygiene product. They are side products and contamination chemicals that are always monitored. Also, in the study, they used the model to predict skin absorption by modifying the model by multiplying it by 20 folds because the skin is more permeable in the groin area, which is a questionable number for me. So what did this study find? To understand this, the study used a concept called hazard ratio, which means they divided the calculated dose of the chemical found in the pads by a reference dose. You can see the definition of the reference dose here. So, the higher the hazard ratio HR means you are exposed to more of this chemical. One out of 79 products can expose you by inhalation to a compound called heptane 11 times more than the reference dose. This compound can cause headaches and skin irritation, which means this compound causes non-risk-related side effects. All other tested chemicals had hazard ratio HR of 0.2, which is below 1. Technically, it's negligible. Now, the study used another concept called the estimated excess cancer risk, which is probability Again, remember the word probability that an exposed individual will develop cancer because of the exposure. It's represented in a special form. How many extra cases of cancer we will get if we expose 1 million people to this chemical for 70 years? So you will find numbers like 1 in a million, 2 in a million, etc. So, Using a vaginal wash that contained those chemicals led to a probability increase, not a defined increase, remember that, from 1 in a million to 3.3 in a million. If you inhale that chemical while using that wash, the chemical in question is 1,4-dioxin which is suspected to cause malignancy in human because of an animal studies on rat inhaling this chemical for two years. Again, another chemical found is benzene in a spray and powder product for the groin area, which is a worst case scenario, which is not going to happen in real life because your skin doesn't absorb 100% of the chemical applied to it. The increased cancer risk from 1 in a million to 2.2 in a million and all other products and chemicals did not increase the risk. So what does those numbers mean? Are they an alarming number in increase from 1 in a million to 2.2 and 3.3 .3 in a million? Or they are numbers that can be neglected? I looked it for a trusted organization when it comes to regulations of toxicology. And according to the Environmental Protection Agency, APA in the US and Health Canada in Canada, any chemical that leads to an increase of excess cancer risk of less than tenfold is considered a negligible effect. Remember again and again, I want to repeat it, is that a probability increase, not 100% definite increase. Finally, what did the study concluded? 
let me quote and i quote using reasonable upper level exposure scenarios volatile organic compound exposure from lifetime use of most menstrual pads and tampons was not associated with meaningful non-cancer or cancer health risk except for several pads with high non-cancer risk end of quote that mean irritation of the skin or headache for example also and i quote the assumed exposure scenario while conservative may not accurately reflect all or typical situation end of quote so as a final word i want to say please always be critical don't be afraid to ask questions and every time anyone try to scare you with a chemical name without mentioning three essential information like dosage exposure and frequency be very very skeptical as always stay safe bye